24 contestants, one island, one pro climber, and all out war. So I was scrolling through Netflix the other day and I saw the show Siren Survive the Island and I was like, oh, <laughs> this looks cool. I saw that everyone was beating the shit out of each other. And I was like, well, you know, it'd be cool if uh, there's a pro climber in this and I could make a video on it because that's basically my only criteria for making videos about anything on this channel. And who would have guessed it? There is one. Basically the premise of this show is we've got six teams, team soldier, team firefighter, team police, team guard, team stunt, and team athlete and pretty much the entire focus of the show is physical violence. So uh, certain teams have other advantages over other ones like uh, Team Soldier, right? Uh, they fight shit for a living. And I gotta say, I was sleeping on Team Guard at first, but then I saw their highlight reel and they're doing all kinds of crazy shit, flipping, chucking people, doing <laughs> the, the, the wildest shit I've ever seen. Team Athlete, on the other hand, which is the team that has our pro climber, has two professional wrestlers and the judo world champion. Now, normally these titles don't mean shit on these games, so it doesn't matter if you're a pro fighter or a firefighter, uh, NFL player. If you go on American Ninja Warrior, the people that win are just the people who do American Ninja Warrior for a living. It's really that simple. Like, being a professional fighter is not going to help you land the jumping spider. But this is not a normal game show. This game show is all about physical violence, so a team athlete might actually have a leg up here. Now, I do have to make a quick PSA really quick. Uh, there is almost no climbing <laughs> in this show at all. I, I started watching it. I saw there was a climber, and I was super excited to make a video on it. But there's, like, no climbing. There's, like, one really cool part with climbing in it, and you know what? That was enough for me. Also, other thing I need to say, spoiler alert. So the show starts off with our first event, the Mud Flats, where all the competitors have to run as a team across this just disgusting swampy mud flat they have to do this event in their uniforms that they showed up in so team soldier has like boots on and you know the military cargo pants like their outfits are designed for this type of event whereas on the other hand one of the other teams that was doing pretty well is team guard and they're wearing fucking heels and suits they're dressed for a day in the office not crossing a mud flat so team guard holds out as long as they can until this chick falls down a, down a hill and uh, at that point they just give up they go from being in second to like i'm pretty sure they got dead last but it doesn't matter either way because team soldier wins by a landslide and their prize for taking first place is they get to pick their base now this part of the show is kind of complicated i'm going to try to explain it quickly uh so just bear with me for a second Basically, there's six teams and six bases. Each team gets a base and each base has a flag. If another team takes the flag out of your base, your team is eliminated from the competition. But the only time you can take a flag out of a base is during a base battle. Base battles happen once a day at a random time and base battles will not end until one team has been eliminated. And you know a base battle's begun when you hear this siren. It's fucking creepy. And on top of all of this, during each base battle, every competitor has to wear a certain uniform, and this uniform has a little flag on the back, and if somebody pulls your flag out during a base battle, you are eliminated until the end of the base battle. So, it could behoove you to pick off a team one by one by ripping their flags out, and then just go for their base when there's no one left to guard it. So it's the first night, everyone's getting cozy in their new bases, trying to get a good night's sleep, maybe having a little snack, but Team Soldier thinks a little bit differently. There's one character that I absolutely love on Team Soldier, which is like the intel chick. She works in intelligence, I think. I don't even know if she actually does, but she's all about gathering intel. She's always sneaking around, and she decides to sneak over to Team Police's base to try to get some intel, and it just so happens the Team Police is uh, going to Team Firefighter's base to try to get some intel on them, because uh, police and firefighters just immediately don't like each other. I, I know this is like a trope, I guess it's real because they just target each other immediately. Hey, go save a kitten in a tree, you fucking homos. But the soldier chick realizes the team police is gone, breaks into their base, goes through all their shit. She's like the kid you stop inviting to slumber parties because she stays up later than everybody else and draws dicks on everybody's faces. That's her. And while she's snooping, she notices something suspicious on top of team police's lockers, which turns out to be their flag. Now this is pretty solid intel, granted she can't steal the flag yet because it's not during a raid, but as she's leaving the base, Team Police shows back up and she starts freaking out, she doesn't know what to do.
somehow she manages to make it out undetected, makes it back to her base, tells her team about all the intel she got. They get a good night's sleep, and the next morning, the sirens go off. So as soon as the raid starts, Team Firefighter decides to leave two behind and send two to raid, <laughs> you guessed it, Team Police's base. But when they show up, all four of Team Police are there guarding their base and Team Firefighter is way overconfident and they decide to just go for it and try to do an all out assault. So once the first firefighter gets eliminated, it's a three on one and the other firefighter's like, shit. And at first she decides to make a run for it, but l let's be honest, she's not much of a, <laughs> not much of a runner. <laughs> and even she realizes this, alright, so she decides to just stand her ground and uh, she gets taken down. And at this point, Team Police is like, oh shit, we just took out two of Team Firefighter, that means they only have two left guarding their base. So they decide to leave one behind and send the other three on an all-out assault on Team Firefighter. which. For the most part, it's a pretty solid plan, but there is one issue. Um, team Soldier and Team Stunt uh, are in an alliance now, and they've been sitting in the woods the entire time, just eating popcorn, watching this entire thing unfold. So as Team Police marches off to take down Team Firefighter, uh, five contestants from Team Stunt and Team Soldier storm Team Police's base with the one remaining Team Police member guarding it, and things do not go well for Team Police. First, they try to kick in the door, but Team Police thought of this, and the one chick that's you know barricading the door is like, Fuck me. She knows that <laughs> things are not going to go well. And at first I was like, what are they going to do? If they can't get through the door, they can't get through the door. But I did not realize what kind of show I was watching. And boy, was I in for a treat. I did not know they were allowed to do that. And because Team Soldier got intel ahead of time, they knew exactly where the flag was hidden and they take the base, eliminating Team Police. Now, another small rule of the show is if you take another team's base, you get that base. So Team Soldier has two bases now. This uh, barely comes up at all in the show because it, they only have four people, so you can't really guard multiple bases, but I thought I'd let you know. And you're probably wondering, uh, what was the pro climber this whole time? This is a climbing channel after all. What was Team Athlete doing? What was our pro climber doing? Uh, th they were eating breakfast. For some reason, Team Athlete decided to just not do anything during the raid. They just kind of hung out and ate breakfast, and Team Guard was nowhere to be found, which you will see is a, a common theme throughout the rest of the show. Team Guard really likes to take the, the, the guard part of their job very literally. They never leave their base. They leave all four behind to guard it. They're really good at guarding, all right? And Team Athlete just kind of does whatever they want the whole show. They, if they want to eat breakfast during a raid, they're going to eat their waffles. And you might be asking, why are they so confident? Why is our pro climber so confident that they can just sit and eat breakfast during the raid? Probably because she has fingers of steel. And if you want fingers of steel, you should try Frictitious Hangboards. This video is sponsored by Frictitious. They make hangboards and doorway mounts so you never have to find a stud in your drywall again. You see, the problem with hangboarding at the gym is it's gonna take away from your rock climbing session. You gotta have a lackluster rock climbing session if you wanna save some energy for hangboarding. If you wanna rock climb and hangboard, you gotta take recovery time, but nobody wants to drive to the gym, drive home, and then go back to the gym just to hangboard. Uh, realistically, you're never gonna do that. But if you have a frictitious hangboard at home, you can go to the gym early in the day, come home for a few hours, and then do a hangboard workout. You don't even have to leave your house. Like, why would you even want to use a gym hangboard anyway? You don't know where that thing's been. You don't know who's been touching that thing. And I know a lot of people are going to be hesitant because they're like, ah, I don't know if I trust that, 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 that the door, man. I don't want it wobbling around, falling on me. Listen, I put mine up on the worst door frame you've ever seen. It's not even like a professionally made door frame. It's this flimsy piece of shit. And I've been using it for months, not even as much as a little wiggle. So if you want to try a frictitious hangboard, click the link in the description below and get 20% off any hangboard if you buy a doorway mount. You don't need a drill or anything. They'll put it together for you. Uh, all the work's done. You just slap it up on the wall. You got a hangboard and you can do your workout. Get your hangboard sessions in, burn some calories and earn some money. Not in real life, but in the show. Because in this show, burning calories is currency. So the way the competitors in the show buy food and supplies is there's a small shop that's open one hour a day and they take all the calories you burned throughout the entire day and use those as currency that you can use to buy whatever you want. 
So everybody's stopping by the snack shack. They're buying food, right? Fruits, veggies, a fucking team firefighter buys bacon. They spend like all their money on fucking bacon. But team soldier is built different. They spend their money on smoke grenades, shovels, radios, a fucking ghillie suit. And whatever money they had left over, they spend on tomatoes. They <laughs> eat tomatoes the entire show. I'm not even exaggerating. That's all they eat the whole show. I guess it's like the cheapest thing on the menu. So they just are fucking chowing down on tomatoes. It's fucking disgusting. I would I'd rather eat dirt than tomatoes. Tomatoes are nasty. It's the grossest part of the entire- seriously, don't eat just tomatoes. It's- it's fucking gross. But now that everybody has some supplies and food in their stomach, they start prepping for the next raid. Everyone starts hiding their flag, trying to find cool places to- to stash it where nobody else can find it. It seems a little insignificant, but another team trying to find your flag can buy you some valuable time. When the soldiers took out Team Police, Team Police's assault force was a few seconds away from taking Team Firefighter's flag. Meaning that if Team Soldier hadn't already had the intel of where Team Police's flag was, Team Police probably would have taken out Team Firefighter before they were eliminated. So all the teams are desperately trying to find good places to hide their flags to buy them those valuable seconds. And in Team Firefighter's base, they have this fucking tree growing up through the center of the, the house they're staying in, and they decide the best place to hide their flag is at the top of the tree. But there's one problem with this. Nobody on Team Firefighter is a pro climber. So the chick from Team Firefighter gets injured from the fall and she has to go to the medical tent, which is just this small tent <laughs> next to the shop where uh, there's a doctor, medical supplies, stuff like that. But on her way out, Team Soldier spots her while spying in the woods. So not only does Team Soldier realize that one of Team Firefighter's competitors is injured, but they decide, uh, fuck it, let's get more intel. They break in <laughs> to the medical tent at night. They go through everybody's medical records, find out their past injuries, their allergies, what medications they're on. I know I'm a rock climber and this is a climbing channel, but Team Soldier's the best. <laughs> team Soldier is awesome. It's hard to root for, for Team Athlete and Team Rock Climber when all they do is, is sit around eating fucking breakfast all day. So the next day, the competitors head to their second event, which is a wood cutting challenge. And once again, Team Soldier goes hard. And also, once again, Team Guard does not. Oh, we're on So everybody's cutting wood. Team Firefighter's cutting wood. Team Stunt's cutting wood. Even our pro climber is cutting wood. Bam. Rock climbing channel. And once the competitors have succeeded in cutting all their wood, their next challenge is to build a fire. And then, once they're done building their fire, the first team that's done building their fire and cutting their wood gets a hose, and uh, they gotta start hosing out all the other fires. And the last team with the fire standing wins. Can, can you guess which team does the best at this event? Which team is the best at putting out fires with, with the big hose? And as everybody's leaving the arena to head back to their bases, uh, we get a little jibber jabber. Everyone starts talking to each other a little bit. Team Soldier and Team Stunt solidify their alliance, agreeing to make it to the end with each other. And Team Firefighter and Team Athlete form their own alliance. And, and this is good to remember because this is probably the most important thing that happens in the entire show. The next raid begins and Team Fire, with the help of Team Athlete, launch an all-out assault on Team Stunt's base. This is definitely the most crazy battle that happens throughout the entire show because all four of Team Athlete go out to attack Team Stunt and three of Team Firefighter go out, meaning it's a seven versus four. So Team Stunt barricades the door to try to buy themselves some time, but <laughs> Team Firefighter has an ax, so they just chop that bitch down. They breach the inside of Team Stunt's base and take out two of their competitors before they realize the flag is actually on the roof. And this is where we finally get to see our pro climber in action. The whole reason I made this video on a rock climbing channel our pro climber realizes the ladder is unclimbable to get on the roof. They're blocking it too well, but no one's guarding the backside of the base. It was deemed unclimbable. Nobody could make their way up the backside of the base. It's nothing but a flat wall. But our pro climber does the impossible and scales the back of the base, making it to Team Stunt's flag. So the plan almost worked, but uh, the climber gets spotted immediately, and the chick who spots her on top of the base is Team Stunt's like most dangerous competitor, and she does not fuck around. <laughs> she beats the shit out of the pro climber. I mean, she absolutely throws her around. I mean, being small and lightweight is great for rock climbing. Not so good for fighting outside of your weight class. So at this point, the reinforcements show up. Team Soldier makes it on the scene, but it's too late. Uh, and Team Stunt is absolutely swarmed. Uh, they already got 
people up on the roof taking out their last competitor and the raid is over. Now you might be wondering once again, where was Team Guard? There was a lot of action going on in this raid, but Team Guard, once again, was nowhere to be found. Well, uh, a little spoiler alert for the rest of the show, Team Guard is fucking useless. <laughs> they do fuck all the entire show. They spent the entire second raid sitting at their base pulling guard. So after Team Stunt gets eliminated, we move on to the next challenge, which is like a hole digging challenge. Thing. It's super uninteresting to watch, but Team Firefighter wins again. And this time, their benefit is even better than the last one. They get to pick the time of the next raid. And not only that, but Team Soldier overhears them talking with Team Athlete saying that Team Soldier's their next target. So Team Soldier's freaking out. They ask Team Guard for help. Team Guard agrees to help them, but they know Team Guard's fucking useless. So they're like, shit, we, we gotta figure something out. So they send that intel chick I was telling you about at the beginning. She sneaks over to Team Firefighter's base and lays outside in the dark for hours until they head back and overhears them talking when they say this. <laughs> And honestly, this is the climax of the entire show. She finds out exactly what time they're planning on doing a raid, and it's awesome, but the show just kind of goes downhill from here because uh, if you really think about it, what the fuck are you gonna do with that information? Like, I guess it's kind of nice to know, but as you've seen, really the show just comes down to one thing, which is uh, who can win a fight? And that's kind of my overall criticism for the show in general is that th there really wasn't any wiggle room for winning base battles unless uh, you had people who could win in wrestling matches and pull people's flags out. That's really all the show came down to. So Team Soldier knows they're going to get ganked. They know they can't win in one-on-one -on -one fights against Team Athlete with their professional wrestlers. So they come up with a, a pretty genius plan. They set up all kinds of traps around their base and leave two behind to protect the flag while the other two hide in the woods. And once the raid begins, the two soldiers left behind guarding the base call out how many of each team are there attacking their base so that the two in the woods know which base to attack themselves. And Team Firefighter sends all four of their contestants. So it's a race against time. The two soldiers start hauling ass to Team Firefighter's base, realizing all they have to do is get into the base and grab the flag. There's no one there guarding it. But the other two contestants on Team Soldier have to successfully defend against two entire teams. Now they do have a pretty epic battle, I'm not gonna lie, but uh, one of Team Soldier, when they finish spraying their fi uh, fire extinguisher, she chucks it down at the other competitors and they stop the entire raid. They're like, whoa, that is not okay. You cannot throw fire extinguishers at people, especially not firefighters. And then the production team, for some reason, decides to just restart the raid the next day, and that uh, the two soldiers that were left behind defending the base are both just automatically eliminated at the start of the next base battle. So Team Soldier was actually like this close to taking out Team Firefighter. They, they were right there at their base, and the two defenders were actually holding them off pretty well. There's no way that they would have gotten Team Soldier's flag before Team Soldier actually won. But now, because they're restarting with only two, uh, Team Soldier just gets absolutely annihilated in the next raid, and now they have to eliminate two teams, so everybody just uh, funnels to Team Guard. Now, even though Team Soldier got eliminated, I was still pretty excited for this. I mean, Team Guard has done nothing but guard their base the entire time. They didn't even show up to help Team Soldier when they said they would. They, they just cannot not guard shit. And now, finally, we get to see what happens when their base gets attacked. So, <laughs> Team Guard doesn't do anything. They just get all of them get out like immediately. They can't protect uh, their base at all. I don't. It, what do they do? What does Team Guard do? And some of you might be curious. Uh, what about that highlight reel at the beginning? Shouldn't Team Guard have been backflipping and chucking people all over the place? How'd they lose so easily? Well, uh, it's because stuff like this. It, this shit's fake as fuck. Anytime you see somebody fighting, like flipping around or like wrapping their legs around people, that, that shit's not real. All right, you have to choose to let somebody do that to you. Trust me, I would know I'm an amateur climber, okay? And I will say, as funny as it was seeing Team Guard just get annihilated, it also kind of peeved me a little bit because there's this chick on Team Firefighter that carries a fire axe with her everywhere she goes. She will not put this fire axe down. She literally has it in her hand all the time and she carries it even when she's fighting with people. She literally dives on top of this person in a brawl with the fire axe in her hand. How did Team Soldier get punished so badly that they were automatically eliminated because somebody threw a fire extinguisher? When Team Firefighters got a chick swinging axes at people. I would much rather have a fire extinguisher thrown at me than grapple with somebody holding an axe. 
So the raid's over, Team Soldier and Team Guard are eliminated, and we're left with our final two, Team Fire and Team Athlete. Both teams start to prepare for the final raid. Team Athlete decides to just completely make the ladder to the roof inaccessible, so the only person that can get up there is our pro climber. I told you there wasn't very much climbing content in this video, all right? That's, that's the only other thing that involves climbing. They block the ladder, and, and the climber climbs up around the back, and it's cool because she's the only one that can get up there. It doesn't matter anyway because, uh, you know, what you expect is going to happen. All the pro wrestlers and judo players absolutely destroy Team Firefighter. Uh, they, they don't even make it to Team Stunt's base. So I think the show could have been a lot better if they they'd valued uh, maybe like scheming and plotting a little bit more than just physical violence. Like, uh, to be honest, Team Athlete was going to win no matter what. They had a pro climber. You guys think the series is a joke? Who wins every time? Pro climbers. It's not a joke. Pro climbers win every... That's going to be so loud in the mic. Pro climbers just win everything. They're just the best. Maybe, you know, it helped to have some pro fighters on the team. Maybe it helped to have a pro climber storm the back uh, the back of the, the, the base and then get beaten up right away. Even with my criticisms, though, I thought the show was absolutely amazing. I loved this show. I, I debated not making a video on it because there's not very much climbing content, but I love making these videos about game shows, and this was one of my favorite ones I've ever watched. I was like, I'm not going to not make a video on it, and uh, I'm going to be out of town for the next couple weeks. It's going to be hard for me to upload, so... I was like, hey, whatever. <laughs> I'm just going to make the video. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. If you want to get a hangboard, get Fertitious Hangboard. Get 20% off the hangboard if you buy a doorway mount. Click the link in the description. Try them out. Why, why would you not try them out? Why, you don't want to be like the chick climbing up the back side of the base, getting the flag. Well, she didn't get the flag. She got, she got her ass kicked. But you'd be, you'd get a, you'd be a strong climber.